So last night, um, I'm thinking, something pops into my mind, and I realize that the politicians and the media both played us and are playing us in terms of the COVID-19 relief, um, the stimulus package, all the discussions that we see happening in the media, all over the news, and there's one question that no one's asking. The politicians should have been asking it and talking about it, and the media should have been asking it too, and they didn't. So before I get into that question, let me lay out something that made me start to think about this. And by the time I lay it out, you'll probably already know where I'm going with this. Let's take a look at how a bill is created in the first place. COVID-19 relief bill, stimulus bill. How is a bill written? So let's take a look at that. I got two slides to show you on that. Um, and then a third slide. And then I'll explain why this, important, this question is so important. So first off, a bill can be introduced in either chamber of con Congress by a senator or representative who sponsors it. Once a bill is introduced, it is assigned to a committee whose members will research, discuss, and make changes to the bill. The bill is then put, for, put before the chamber to be voted on. So notice I emphasize the word committee. The job of a public bill committee is to debate and consider amendments to the bill. Uh, the committee considers each bill clause by clause. Let me say that again. The committee considers each bill clause, clause by clause and may amend it. So we, we, we are given this, this scenario as if um, it's all about either the Democrats passing or the Republicans rejecting or Republicans passing or the Republicans. This is just back and forth about who wants the bill to pass. But nobody's thinking about why we're having this discussion in the first place. This was supposed to be, so they come back and they say, this is a, we have a bipartisan plan in place. What does bipartisan really mean? What does bipartisan? Bipartisan means involving the agreement or cooperation of two political parties that usually oppose each other's policies. This is what I think bipartisan means. I think both parties, bipartisan, both parties are in on it. Why? Because of this question right here. If a bill must go through a committee and the committee researches and discusses and can make changes to that bill. And if the committee is supposed to go through that bill clause by clause and they can change it before it's put forth to be passed, how did all that bloat make it onto the bill before it got to the point where it was a battle between the House and Senate passing it in the first place? Who wrote the bill? You see, when I was when I was when I was coming up, um, guys, you know, guys sometimes tend to travel in groups. You know, some people call them gangs. Um, some people just call them groups of guys. Whatever you want to call it, a um, bunch of guys who know each other. And then sometimes you you come across other guys who who, who know each other. They're tight. We're tight. And there may be a disagreement. It can, it can be about anything. Right, um, and if you really knew each other, you'd probably all be friends, but you don't. Different neighborhood or whatever. But I remember specifically that most of the time, none of us really wanted to fight. Right, but there was always one idiot, one or two idiots with big mouths, who <laughs> ran the risk of everybody getting getting hyped up and, and, and a big fight breaking out. And I remember what, what, what was common to say was, you know, get your friend. You know, go go do something about your boy. You know, and it was understood. Both sides knew 
that that individual or those individuals were the problem. So to save all, all of us in trouble, the, the group who had the offending party in the group would check them themselves. They'd say, man, be quiet. Man, shut up. Right? And there was, it was a respect thing there. Check your boy before I have to check him. That was the thing, right? So let's put this in a political context. Let's say Democrats, Republicans. You got some fools um, who are putting together or on a committee for this bill that's supposed to be about COVID-19. And somehow, somebody decides that they want to put things in about museums and fishing and counting trees and all of these other things. And you would think that somebody on that side would have checked them on that before it made it to that point, but they didn't. Right? See, you see, because we have allowed politicians to hide behind labels. It's just like with the racial thing, white people, black people, instead of individuals, we do the same thing in politics. Democrats, Republicans. So we say, the Democrats said, or the Republicans said, you see, all the Democrats weren't in that room, weren't on that committee. There were specific individuals on that committee. I would love to know their names. And you would think that the other side who claims that the reason they oppose the bill is because there's so much bloat on that bill, you would think that they would call out the idiots on the other side. You would think instead of saying, well, we oppose the Democrats, they would say, I've got a problem with Johnny and Chuck and William and Alfonso. These guys who were in this committee by name who thought it was a good idea to put that in the bill. You see, when there's that type of threat, as I said before, Sometimes the opposing group will check their members for you to avoid the embarrassment. You see, had the Republicans done that, then it would have made the, the Democrats look like, you know what? Um, um, we can't handle our business. We can't even control our own, our own people. We can't work for the good of the American people because we've got too many other interests in the way. It's, and... and it's not even it's not even so much as just a a democrat republican dividing line or house and senate dividing line because there's i mean there's there's idiots all over the place it's just like a bunch of idiots that's why <laughs> it things came out looking the way they did when it pertained to Donald Trump that's why you had people who can't stand him on both sides if you ever notice the way Trump moves he calls people out he has no problem pointing a finger at an individual. He won't just always get up there and say, you know, the Democrats, this, the Republicans, that. He will name names. And when you name names, you hold people accountable for that. Right? So that then you put the pressure back on them. I can't do stupid things because if I do stupid things, best case scenario, I don't get reelected. Worst case scenario, people show up at my house because I thought it was a good idea to put money in on the bill for foreign countries before I put money on the bill for my own people. I thought it was a good idea to count trees instead of taking care of my people. And we allowed them to sideslip that step, that whole thing. That's the political side, the politician side of the house, but the media. You see, I would think that the job of an investigative journalist a professional journalist is to get at the truth, to get at the meat. Do you mean to tell me that anyone, no one in the media community, the mainstream media community, thought it was a good idea to find out the names of the individuals who were responsible for that bill being presented the way it was in the first place? Right? See, think about a restaurant. Think about a restaurant or a cook at a restaurant. They have a cook there who cooks crappy food. The food's no good, right? So 
We take that food the way it is, and then inside the restaurant on the customer side, we've got um, two groups of customers. Instead of Democrats and Republicans, we got the the anti-salt and the pro-salt people. And the anti-salt is saying that no, we, we don't want you to put any salt on this. No, don't put any salt on this. And the pro-salt saying we we will not uh, accept this food unless we're allowed to put salt on it. Right. So they have this big debate. They go back and forth, and then. They say, we know we came up with a bipartisan deal and, and we're going to just put a little salt on it, right? Both sides are going to concede and we're just going to put a little salt on there for a little bit of flavor. But the food was crappy in the first place. And if you think about that, if you were, to, if you were on the side that, that doesn't want people to put salt all over their food, you'd make sure it's prepared properly. You'd make sure it's, maybe it was seasoned properly. It would be no need to put a lot of salt all over the food, right? We just want people to get fed. So we're going to make this as simple as possible. We're going to season it up well. Well, where it's palatable to the taste. We know what the people want to eat. We're going to give that to them. And that's how we're going to serve it. Because I don't want people putting salt on my food. I'm going to cook it right in the first place. And then the other side was like, you know, uh, our, our big thing is we want to put salt on it. But guess what? If the food was prepared well, salt wouldn't have been an issue for them. There's a little side note in there. It makes me think about when we... We used to say putting the salt in the game. That's where Donald Trump came in. He put salt in the game. Um, but even he caved in the end to the pressure of having to deal with a with a situation of uh, of it not being prepared right in the first place. And we allowed the media to just get off the hook. We allowed them to not dig at all. Their job is supposed to be to dig for facts. We allowed them to report 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 and never dig not once if we knew the names of all of these individuals and held them accountable we'd start getting different types of actions from these politicians and if we knew their names and they knew we knew their names and they knew the media was going to do their job and harp on this, whether they're Republican, whether they're a Democrat, no matter who they are, they're going to point a finger at them and say, this idiot. They're going to show up at that person's house, right? Knock on the door. And when they come, you've seen the TV shows where the reporter's at the door. When you come down to the stairs, say his name is Jared. Politician's name is Jared. He opens the door. Jared, are you the one? Are you the congressman are you the senator who decided it was a good idea to put down counting fish in the COVID-19 relief bill was that you because all I want you to do is in front of the the American people I want you in front of everyone to say I thought it was a good idea to put that in the bill that's all I want I just want who, whomever put it there, I, will, I want the media to hold them accountable. I want Republicans to hold them accountable. I want fellow Democrats to hold them accountable and make them admit that. Ask that question and keep asking that question until you get an answer. You ask the question and they, they, they go around with a five minute answer that doesn't answer the question. Then you ask it again. And then they go in another circle and you ask it again. You ask the same question over and over and over the same exact question until you get an answer. And if you don't get an answer, say you, you've been interviewing for 30 minutes, you don't get an answer, guess what you get to say? You get to say, you get to turn to the camera and look at America and say, I've asked so-and-so here the same exact question, a yes or no question for 30 minutes. And this idiot couldn't say yes or no. It's as simple as that. And they know it. The media knows it. They just keep playing these stupid games. This, this back and forth. They, they, they're almost worse than the politicians. It's sickening. It's pathetic. But guess what we do? We sit back and watch it. Like a soap opera. And then we allow ourselves to get sucked into these these arguments that are not even on point. It's like a football game. Think about a football game, right? Here's an example. Well, check, take a look at this 
right? And, and before I show it to you, I'm going to prep your mind for it. One team you have one political party, the other team you have another political party, and then the announcers talking about certain individuals within that party. Take that information I just gave you, right? Think about that as you watch this clip. Here we go. With everything out of the, your playbook here. How about a handoff, reverse, double reverse, with your big quarterback leading down front, Cam Newton, but he ain't going to hit nobody. <laughs> He's faking on the corner, and this is just great running after the after the run. Now, isn't that how we allow things to be done? And if you notice, everybody went one way and the ball went the other way. And that's what we do. And then we have politicians. Oh, so-and-so is going to do something. Oh, he's not going to do nothing. Uh, this, that, and the other. This, that, and the other. But nobody ever thinks about what got that ball rolling that direction in the first place. Or what the ball really is. Was this about a $2,000 stimulus check? Was it about a $600 stimulus check? Was it about uh, um, fish? Counting fish and down trees and feeding foreign countries and foreign aid? Why, why haven't any politicians been, been held feet to the fire and asked specific questions about what it's all about and why that bill was imposed the way it was in the first place? Why there was even a debate to be had? Would love to know your thoughts about that. Please put them in the comment section below. On that note, guys, take care. Peace.